The first thing you need to know are the characteristics of minerals. There are four characteristics. The first one is that minerals are naturally occurring. That means they form by processes on or inside Earth with no help from humans. So they form in nature. The second characteristic is that they are inorganic. So they're not made by life processes. They're not made of living things. They are non-living. The third characteristic is that minerals have a definite chemical composition. You'll see the mineral quartz and gold. Gold's kind of going up the screen right now. Um, quartz and gold both have a chemical composition. That's what that is in parentheses right there. Um, so the SiO2 for quartz is its chemical formula. Um, and those elements came from the periodic table, which are on the far left of the screen. The fourth characteristic of minerals is that they are solid and they have an orderly arrangement of atoms. So you'll see that example halite. Um, it's a solid mineral. And then the next picture beside it with the green and gray dots, that's showing you what the arrangement of the atoms look like to make that mineral. When you're identifying minerals, you want to think of how you would identify a friend if you were trying to describe them and they were standing across the room. You would probably identify your friend as being tall or short or maybe what color shirt they have on, what color their hair or eyes are. So you would use physical properties to describe them. Well, we do the same thing when we identify minerals. So you want to use physical properties and these are some of the ways that scientists identify minerals. They identify them by how they look, their color and appearance their hardness, so how hard or soft the mineral is, the streak, the luster, cleavage and fracture, and then any other specific properties that a mineral might have. And make sure you're paying attention to these because you'll be using each one of these tests in your class um, the next day. Okay, so minerals are made, or what are what a mineral is made of, or its composition, composition just means what something's made of, is uh, determined by its color. So color is usually the first and most easily observed um, property. However, color and appearance are not enough to distinguish most minerals. Some minerals are always the same color, and some minerals have many colors. If you look at all the quartz samples down there at the bottom of the page, there's a rose quartz that looks kind of pink, regular quartz which looks kind of white or clear, and then a smoky quartz which looks black. These are all quartz. They just look like different colors because when they were formed they had different impurities that made them turn a different color. But these are all the mineral quartz. Hardness is another way to test the mineral. Hardness is just how easily a mineral can be scratched. And we use the Mohs hard scale to understand this. The Mohs hard scale was actually developed by a mineralogist called Frederick Mohs. And if you look at this chart right there on the right side, sorry, the left side where it says mineral, these are all the different minerals um, that are like our basic minerals that we're using for the hardness scale. So talc has a scale of one. So it is our softest mineral, and if you go all the way down to the bottom to diamond, diamond has a hardness of 10. It is our hardest mineral. On the far right, you'll see common objects, and these are the common objects we use to actually scrape the minerals and test to see where they fall on this hardness scale. The way a mineral reflects light is its luster. A mineral's luster can be metallic or non-metallic. Metallic minerals look like metal. Okay, you can actually even see the word metal in the word metallic. So metallic minerals are shiny like metal. Non-metallic minerals have a luster that looks dull, pearly, silky, or glassy. Streak is the color that a mineral makes in or that the mineral is in a powdered form. So what you would do is you would take that mineral and you would scrape it across that plate, that white plate that you see on the screen. And whatever color comes off, that's actually the mineral breaking apart into a powder form on that plate. And that's another way we can identify minerals because they don't always look the same when you streak them on that plate. However, 
um, the street test only works if the mineral is softer than the street plate itself. If it's harder, then it'll actually cut the street plate and no powder will come off. The way a mineral breaks can be a distinguishing characteristic. So first of all, cleavage. Cleavage just means that when you break a mineral, it breaks into flat parallel planes or sheets, like the picture that you see at the bottom of the screen. Um, that mineral is biotite and it has one direction of cleavage. It actually breaks into sheets like you, like you see in the picture. Fracture is when a mineral breaks in rough, uneven, jagged edges like the quartz and the obsidian. So you'll see how there, there's no real just flat pieces. It's very jagged. Some minerals have unique properties. This, would, this was the other part we talked about earlier, um, such as light or magneticism. So if you look at where it says healthy eating and you see that mineral that's on top of the words, well, you can actually read through that mineral. This is the mineral calcite. And calcite has the ability for light to transfer to um, go through it. So you can actually read through this mineral. You can actually see through it. The other mineral is magnetite, and this is this mineral's property, specific property, is that it is magnetic. What you need to know when you come into class next, you need to make sure that you know the four characteristics of a mineral, and you need to know the ways to identify a mineral. So the color, the hardness, streak, luster, cleavage, fracture. Make sure you are familiar with those.